How to make airline connectors, part one. Making fittings for model steam engines that can be left in place which allows for quick and easy connection of a compressed air supply. These small parts are very easy to make. All you need is a small lathe and some brass hexagon bar. As always the job begins by using a centre drill to make a hole in the centre of the bar. At this point I would like to mention that you do not need to drill all the way through the bar using the tapping size drill. The hole needs to be just deep enough so that once it's threaded it can be screwed onto a commercial fitting that you would find on a model steam engine. I'm going to make four of these in total and the first one is the 5 16 by 32 version. I've engaged back gear on the lathe to slow it down and I'm threading under power. You can do this job by rotating the chuck by hand. This is not a very high tolerance part and I'm using the power feed just to speed up the job. In this clip I'm using a parting tool as a general purpose grooving and turning tool. Please note though the parting tool isn't stuck out of the holder very far because to allow it to be a longitudinal turning tool it does need to be fairly rigid. What I'm attempting to do is turn down this part of the hexagon bar to approximately 5 sixteenths of an inch which will be quite a tight fit in a piece of silicone rubber tubing. And once I've turned down the diameter to 5 sixteenths of an inch I'm going to make some grooves strategically placed along the length of the tube. You may be thinking that these grooves are going to be part of an air seal system to make sure that the silicone rubber tube is a good fit on the piece of bar. But in reality they're not necessary at all because if you push a piece of silicone rubber tubing on quite a long brass tube it doesn't really want to come off. The silicone rubber tube will come off quite easily if you turn the air pressure up too high. I do that all the time. Once the tube's been turned to the right diameter by grooving it just reduces the surface area that's in contact with the inside of the silicone rubber tube. However, if you use a small cable tie or a piece of twisted wire to press the silicone rubber tubing into one of the grooves, then the piece of tubing will be very securely attached to the fitting. Once I'd made the first one, I made another. This time I'm threading it quarter by 40 threads per inch, so the hole sizes are different. I'm using the first part that I made as a pattern and that way all of the fittings should be quite similar to each other. The machining operations in this video are very repetitive and quite boring and also very simple. To make this job a success you do need to know one or two quite important things. Mainly what are the tapping size drill bits for the different threads. The hole in the first fitting was 5 16 of an inch in diameter but it wasn't drilled 5 16 of an inch in diameter because if you do that then there's no room for a thread. It needs to be two imperial drill sizes down from the size you're using. That's the way I've always done it anyway but if you want to get more detailed information tapping size drill for 5 16 by 32 TPI and TPI stands for threads per inch. In my hand I have two blanks one threaded 5 sixteenths by 32 and the other one threaded quarter by 40. I'm only making these adapters in the sizes that are most common. 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch, quarter by 40 threads per inch, quarter by 32 threads per inch and 3 eighths by 32 threads per inch. I always use the manual type of chuck in my tailstock, the type that do not use a chuck key because the tap is not held quite as tightly as it would be in a chuck with a chuck key then all that happens is the tap starts to rotate that tells me that it's at the bottom of the hole. Instead of doing the job in this very crude and unprofessional manner what you could do is buy a special gadget that fits in your tailstock chuck detects when the tap is at the end of the hole and reverses to withdraw it but I haven't got one of those. The safest method in the model engineers workshop is to thread by hand because to slow down the lathe I'm using back gear and this is very powerful. So when the tap hits the bottom of the hole something has to give. By using a manual chuck in the tailstock which doesn't hold the tap quite so firmly as soon as the tap rotates I stop the machine and put it into reverse. What I'm doing here is using a 7 seconds of an inch twist drill to drill the hole all the way through the fitting but this is not a good way of doing it. More about this later. 
In this clip I'm making the larger of the four adapters. This one has a thread of 3 8 by 32 threads per inch. By the way, this stuff is not brass, it's actually alum bronze and it's really hard to cut. And you will notice that the drilled hole isn't in the middle. Here I'm using a file just to clean up the end and smooth everything out. A viewer wrote in suggesting that I should use the file underneath, but you can't do that because the lathe is going the wrong way and the teeth don't cut in that direction. So that is why you always see me using a file in the lathe fitted with a proper handle on the top part of the work. The 7 seconds of an inch diameter holes drilled all the way through the fittings were not too bad in the brass, but this is the larger fitting made from alum bronze and the hole is miles out. That's because the small drill has wandered a bit on its way through the work, but it doesn't matter for this application, it's only an airline fitting. And here's the full set. Quarter by 32, quarter by 40, 5 sixteenths by 32 and 3 eighths by 32. I'm just blowing away all the swarf using the airline. The next thing to do is to fit an O-ring inside each of the fittings. I'm using O-rings to get an airtight seal between the airline fitting and any of the inlet manifolds on the steam engines. I use the O-rings because I think it's a good idea. I don't have to put any pressure on the threads of the fixed inlet manifolds for the steam engines. By way of a comparison, here is a bag full of compressed air fittings that are bought. They're all a little bit on the big side and use BSP threads. On the other hand, these are the ones that I made, which are far more delicate and a lot smaller. All I have to do is press the fittings into a piece of silicone rubber. Before screwing this airline adapter onto the steam engine, I will of course remove the double union that's in the end of it. This is the 5 16 by 32 adapter and it's currently being used to supply air to my Stuart 5A. Remember though, because the grooves in the fitting are parallel, the idea of that is to allow easy removal of the pipe. Even though the Stuart 5A seems to be running quite fast, but the air pressure that I'm feeding it isn't much. For the locomotive, I need quite a bit more, so I can blow the whistle. I need to build a pump around 80 pounds per square inch into the boiler to make it work. Then the speed is controlled by the regulator on the back head of the boiler. In this clip, the regulator on the back of the boiler is wide open, and I'm using the pressure regulator on the compressor. The cable tie on the piece of silicone rubber makes it possible to pump a higher pressure through this union. I want to show you something quite important, so I'm removing the cable tie with a pair of side cutters, and as you can see, the inside of the silicone rubber tubing is badly marked. And when I remove my airline connector, look at the silicone rubber stuck in the grooves. I've mentioned many times before in my videos, whenever you turn a right angle, a 90 degree angle, it is razor sharp. And so I have quite a few razor sharp angles here, which have to be removed by using a small needle file. Once again, on top of the work, never underneath it. This type of silicone rubber is not really good for airlines for feeding locomotives or steam engines of any kind on the bench. In the past when using this type of silicone rubber tubing, I've seen the tubing blow up like a balloon and then go bang. And believe me, the bang was so loud it made my ears whistle. This is a proper commercial airline, it will take a much higher pressure than the silicone rubber. The only problem with this bit of airline is the end part's too big. And by the way, I'm not cutting it on the bench, I'm just cutting it on a spare piece of wood. With this long length of pipe snaking about on the floor as I rotate it to screw it into the model, that is a problem. Even if I fit the airline adapter first, and then fit the pipe to the airline adapter, I still need to use something like a Jubilee clip. In the next episode, I will show you what my solution is to make it so that I can use professional airlines that are very easy to fit and remove without using the very large adapters. That's it for this episode. I'll leave you with my Sterling single, Tess running on the bench. Wherever you may be, stay safe and stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.
please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.